In this video, we will explore what happens when you have a system of equations with an infinite number of solutions. Let's take an example. Let's solve the system y equals 2x plus 3 and 2y minus 6 equals 4x. We can solve this in one of two ways. We can solve it by substituting or we could solve by graphing. There are other methods as well. However, in this case, Substitution appears to be very easy since one of the equations is solved for one of the variables. So let's go ahead and try to solve by substitution. So I'm going to start by rewriting the equation that's not solved for one of the variables. <coughs> so I'm going to rewrite 2y minus 6 equals 4x. And I'm going to substitute in y. I know what y equals. <coughs> So I'm going to write 2 times, and I'm going to replace the y with what y equals. It's 2x plus 3. And I continue writing the rest of the equation. Minus 6 equals 4x. I can change subtraction to addition by adding the opposite. And then I can continue simplifying. I need to distribute the 2. 2 times 2x is 4x plus... 2 times 3 is 6, then we get a plus negative 6 equals 4x. And here I notice that I can continue simplifying. I can add 6 with negative 6, and 6 plus negative 6 is 0. So this is 4x plus 0 equals 4x, and 4x plus 0 is just 4x. So I get 4x equals 4x. Now I need to get my variable to one expression. So I'm going to go ahead and add the opposite of this x term in order to get rid of it. And I add the opposite to both expressions. And 4x plus negative 4x is 0. 4x plus negative 4x is 0. Here we end up with an equation that states that 0 equals 0. All of our variables are gone. We've seen this before when we studied inconsistent systems. When the, when the variables went away, or when there, there were no more variables left in the equation, and the equation was false, we knew that the equation, or that the system was inconsistent. Now, however, the equation is true. Zero does equal zero. So what does this mean? This is going to mean something different. This is not an inconsistent equation. So just like we did when we studied inconsistent equations, let's go ahead and go back to the original system and solve by graphing. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this first equation here, y equals 2x plus 3. It is already in slope-intercept form, so that'll be easy to graph. I'll graph it in green. So I start with the y-intercept, which is 3. So I'm going to go up 3, and then I use the slope, which is 2, in order to find more points, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And then I connect all of those points with a straight edge. And I'd like to make it green here so that we see very clearly which one that is. All right. Now we need to graph the second equation. The second equation is not in slope-intercept form. So we need to put the second equation in slope-intercept form. I'll come down here to do that. And I will graph that one in purple. It's 2y minus 6 equals 4x. In order to put it in slope-intercept form, I need to solve for y. <coughs> So I will add 6 to both expressions. This is going to give me 2y equals 4x plus 6. And now I multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient to get y by itself in both expressions. In the left-hand expression, I'll get y. In the right-hand expression, I have terms. So I need to put those in parentheses and then distribute the 1 half. 4x times 1 half is 2x. 6 times 1 half is 3. 
So this is the slope intercept form of this equation, y equals 2x plus 3. So I'm going to come up here and find the y intercept, which is 3. Count up 3. Put a point right there. And then use the slope to find additional points. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And what are we noticing about this line? This line is the exact same as the last line we just graphed, which is evidenced by the fact that the equation here is the exact same th as the equation as this equation after we put it in slope intercept form. It's both y equals 2x plus 3. In other words, these two equations are the exact same. That means that this point would satisfy both this equation and that equation. This point would satisfy both equations. All of the points on this line satisfy each of these equations. Therefore, this system has an infinite number of solutions, and the solutions will be uh, ordered pairs that will satisfy either this one or the other, because if it satisfies one, it'll satisfy the other because they're the same lines. So if I were working this out in a homework problem or on a test or something, I would simply write, there are an infinite number of solutions. <coughs> if you want to be even more specific, you can say that those solutions are the, sol are the ordered pairs that satisfy either of these equations. So if you're solving by substitution and you end up with an equation with no variables, if the equation is true, like 0 equals 0 or 5 equals 5, then you will know that there is an infinite number of solutions. In other words, the lines are the same. If, however, you get rid of all the variables and the equation is false, then you know that it is an inconsistent system and there are no solutions. The lines will be parallel.